Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ann Collins Goodyear, co-director of the Bowdoin College Museum of Art. We are delighted that you can join us for today's conversation with Dr. Abdulamir Alhamdani, Reconsidering Iraqi Cultural Heritage. Today's presentation marks the museum's fifth annual lecture made possible by the Yadgar Family Endowment a fund generously dedicated to the preservation, interpretation, and dissemination of information about the Assyrian reliefs at the Bowdoin College Museum of Art. We express our deep appreciation to the Yadgars for the many ways in which their support has helped to enrich our understanding of these important artifacts. While we regret that we cannot gather today in person, we are delighted that our electronic networks allow us to be together internationally. Dr. Abdul Amir Alhamdani, who joins us from Iraq, is an anthropological archaeologist specializing in Near Eastern and Mesopotamian archaeology. During the course of his career, he has done remarkable work in the field in addition to serving in many leadership roles in Iraqi cultural institutions. Using cutting edge technology, he has added well over a thousand new archeological sites to the Archeological Atlas of Iraq, in addition to leading international archeological teams at such iconic sites as the ancient city of Ur. His research has been supported by numerous universities including the University of Rome, the State University of New York at Stony Brook, and Harvard University. He has also conducted important work on behalf of UNESCO and the Iraqi government. Between 2018 and 2020, Dr. Alhamdani served as Iraq Minister of Culture. Between 2003 and 2009, he was director of the Antiquities Office of Dakar Province in Southern Iraq and director of the Nasiriya Museum. Today, he is a member of the State Board of Antiquities and Heritage in Baghdad, fellow in the Department of Anthropology at SUNY Stony Brook, and visiting researcher in the Department of Archaeology at Durham University in the United Kingdom. We are delighted that he has agreed to be in conversation with our colleague, Dr. Sean Burris, Andrew W. Mellon Postdoctoral Curatorial Fellow at the BCMA. A specialist in the art of antiquity, Dr. Burris is the co-curator of Assyria to America, which places the museum's 3,000-year-old Assyrian reliefs in the, context, in the context of other examples of visual culture from the period for the first time in the relief's 150 year history at Bowdoin. Although it is not now possible to visit the show in person, we hope you will take advantage of the virtual version of the exhibition available on our website. In addition to co-curating Assyria to America, Dr. Burris is also co-director with Dr. Sarah Graff of, Northwest by North, of the Northwest by Northeast Consortium comprising 14 museums in the Northeastern United States who steward ancient Assyrian reliefs from the Northwest Palace of King Ashurnasirpal II. During the course of today's conversation, we encourage everyone to participate by submitting questions using the Q&A button. While these will not be visible to the audience, they will be visible to Dr. Burris and Dr. Alhamdani. Please also note that the live transcript function is available for anyone who would benefit from captioning. Thank you for being with us. And now without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Abdul Amir Alhamdani. I will now turn the floor over to Sean Burris. Sean? And thank you very much for that introduction. And uh, let me add my own thanks to you, Amir, for joining us today and for sharing your expertise and your insight with us about Iraqi cultural heritage. It really is such a pleasure to have this opportunity to speak with you today uh, and with our, our campus community. 
Now, with your permission, I'd, I'd like to dive right into the conversation. There's, there's a lot of ground we have planned to cover, I hope. Uh, but I do want to reiterate that, um, as Ann mentioned, we will pause at several times throughout the program to field questions from the audience. So for those of you watching at home, uh, if you have a question you'd like to pose to Dr. al Hamdani, please do leave it in the Q&A function, which is at the bottom of your screen, and do so at any time during the program. Amir, uh, your background and training is in archaeology and fieldwork, and you have many decades of experience excavating ancient Mesopotamian sites in Iraq. But I know that in your recent role as Minister of Culture, you were concerned not only with archaeological sites and Mesopotamian artifacts, uh, but really with all aspects of Iraqi culture, past and present, including literature, music, and film. With that breadth of experience, I'm curious about how you personally understand a term like Iraqi cultural heritage. What does it mean to you, and how does it connect with modern Iraq and Iraqi identity today? Well, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, let me thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk to the people of, of uh, Bowdoin Museum. And indeed, it's my pleasure to be useful for the, in the presenting Iraqi cultural heritage. And uh, the, to answer this question, what would you say about using cultural heritage as a tool in, in strengthening the Iraqi national identity? Iraqi since uh, five, five decades or maybe more, been subject to you know wars, conflicts, um, uh, embargoes, and so. So the society is is really uh, fragmented in different ways, you know, socially, culturally, and economically. So um, you know, having the cultural heritage, uh, the unique, uh, the unique uh, cultural heritage, and the rich, indeed, archaeology of of, of Iraq could help us to unify the society. And Iraq, as, as, as everybody knows, have a kind of very oldest and ancient uh, civilizations. One of the oldest you know, civilization in the, in the world. And the new generation, the people always, you know, asking the, the question, who are we as Iraqis? Um, to answer this question, indeed, we could, we could say we are, you know, Mesopotamianists by meaning that, I, I, I mean, I, I mean uh, using Mesopotamian civilization and cultural heritage Iraq as an, a, a platform to house all these, you know, people, all these, you know, societies and in Iraqi communities in one platform with, uh, one would say we are belong to the not necessarily in in uh, in, uh, in DNA, but culturally we we are uh, Mesopotamians or we we do live in uh, Mesopotamia as the way we people in India they would call it we, we are Indian we are in uh, Chinese we are Greek, so one would could say that we are Mesopotamianists. We are belong to the, to this to to the, this area. And it's, instead of saying we are, you know, Kurd, Azidian, Arab, Shia, Mandaic, Christian, Turkmen, and so, we could we could have a, a, a Iraqi national identity. While this identity it, it could be it could be shaped by the the cultural heritage, the uh, the uh, the ancient uh, Mesopotamian cultural heritage. I'm not, you know, calling the people to go back to to live in in you know, ancient time in the antiquities, but I, I would say um, use Mesopotamia. We tried several issues. We tried, you know, you know, several ways of unify the 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 the, the country. And we remember the dictatorship also Saddam Hussein unified the country but in a bad way. In, you, you know, using war uh, em, embargo and you know killing the people. Now it's the time for us Iraqis. We, we think about it, yeah, as 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 I said, we think about it in trying to to use the cultural heritage as umbrella, as a platform to fill the gap between you know nations, to to fill the gap between uh, several communities, ethnic and religious 
groups that they, they do live in, in, in Iraq, they will say we are Mesopotamians, we are Iraqis, we are Mesopotamians. Instead, we will say we are Kurd, we are, we, are, we are Arab. And then this would, could, leave, could lead us to revival Iraqi, Iraqi heritage, uh, would give the importance of the new generation, will, 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 will kind of will educate them, encourage them to be proud of their civilizations. And uh, the new generation, indeed, uh, we, are, we consider them as a tool also because uh, nowadays there is a, a wave of the new generation to respect Iraqi heritage and to take care of, 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 of Iraqi heritage. It's not only in the cultural heritage, we, we, we use the, the, the Iraqi identity in presenting ourselves in, in the cinema, in the theater, uh, in, in different in ways in music. I would, I would like to, to, to say this is Iraqi music, um, fashion, music, theater, cinema, literature. We will have our, our identity, our, our Iraqi cultural identity. And I tried the, this when, when I was a, a minister for, for a, a year or so, and I was calling the, the, the people to leave their uh, special identity, and we, we look to the national identity. We do respect the, the cultural heritage of, of the, of the uh, uh, different religious and ethnic groups, but we are looking for uh, a, a, a national identity we could use, you know, Mesopotamian platform as our identity. And to uh, to give an example of of the, the, that, the uh, the Azidian who live uh, in the north west of, of Iraq, they they were subject to be killed by ISIS by the uh, by by the, the so-called you know Daesh, and those ancient. Uh, a religious group, I, I, I would not call them minorities, I would call them indigenous society, Iraqi indigenous society. So I, I decided indeed to put their uh, in oldest temple in the world, and uh, I nominated to the global heritage uh, list to be one of the you know, cultural heritage sites, uh, in, not only in Iraq, but also all the, over the world to appreciate them, to respect them, to give the, the new generation to uh, Iraqis. They, they will say, they will say that this is your your you know brothers. They, they, they are you know different in religion, yes, but they are the same Iraqis, the same humankind. So uh, I nominated the Lalish Temple in north of uh, Mosul uh, two years ago to be on the list of. Iraqi heritage uh, sites, as you can see here, we do have these ancient uh, Mesopotamian cities like Ur, Ur Uruk, Babylon, Samara, uh, Hatra, Ashur, Arbil, and we are now we are going to have the Azidian temple as well. So that this is just you know taking care of those you know minorities or indigenous societies will give this uh, will will give Iraq opportunity to unify the population. That's really, really interesting. Um, I, I have two questions for you, if I might, to follow up. Um, actually, two related questions. Um, one has to do with uh, sort of local investment in, um, in, in the sites of Iraq. Uh, the, as we know, Iraq is, is a because of having some of the oldest civilization in the world, immensely rich in archaeological sites throughout the country. And um, I think there has long been a myth um, in a lot of Western um, writing and research that these sites were not of importance locally and that they were kind of ignored. But I think we're starting to understand the degree to which local communities care about the sites in their region. And I wonder if you're seeing an increase in that today, if you're seeing more local uh, or, or continued even local investment in archaeological sites. Um, uh, is that something that you're witnessing? Yes, that's in you know, clearly after 2003, you know, people, you know, getting to be introduced to ancient, you know, Mesopotamia, ancient cities and ancient town, 
um, they started also name their children after Mesopotamian uh, names. They do care of this, you know, uh, you know heritage. Um, before 2003, no one can can say anything about you know Mesopotamian uh, Mesopotamian civilization. But after 2003, clearly, uh, the, the the people who started you know visiting archaeological sites uh, started taking care and making you know campaign to raise awareness about the importance of uh, Mesopotamia, and also they they do care about that. And they are proud now. The new, the new generation, specifically in social media, I can see, I can tell, those you know people and and, and the young people, the youth, that they started uh, raising the the question, who are we? And the, the answer for that is, we are Mesopotamianists. And I can I, I can't see that in the school and in, in the media. People started, you know, talking about uh, uh, Mesopotamia. Specifically, with in the, in the media and the social media, um, always you know giving them, uh, int introduce them to uh, civilization, to the you know Mesopotamian civilization. And 2020, just an example, we put uh, Babylon on the on the uh, UNESCO World Heritage List after 40 years of you know uh, trying to do that. But the whole country celebrated from Arbil to Basra because of that uh, of that event, uh, putting you know Babylon on the UNESCO heritage list. So I can tell like people started uh, kind of you know taking care of the civilization. The only issue with with those ex extremists, uh, the, the extremists, and also the uneducated people, the uneducated you know people in the in the countryside. Of course, uh, later on, I would I would talk about that how I use this to educate the people. But uh, in general, those you know extremists, the, like uh, you know ISIS uh, groups, they also they uh, they of course they don't care about you know civilization. They don't care about you know, heritage. Every time when 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 we, when they kind of uh, uh, took a place, they will erase the civilization of these people, like. An example in, Af in Afghanistan, in, in Mali, in Libya, uh, in Syria, and in, in, in Iraq. Once they they got the the, the, the land, they will kill the people and uh, destroy their in, uh, heritage. But in general, like I'm I'm kind of um appreciate the new generation, those you know young you know people. They started you know uh, 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 you know raising awareness about uh, Mesopotamia. That's I, I think that's fantastic to hear, um, and I you know to hear that uh, children are being named after Mesopotamian names. Uh, I, you see I it myself, in. I myself, you know, named my young son Uruk. Oh, wonderful, <laughs> Uruk, um, uh, another world heritage site. Um, and and to hear about social media and 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 education it actually brings me to one other question I'd like to follow up with, um, thinking about the the modern relevance of of the Mesopotamian history um, and and thinking about it as you put it as an umbrella identity, um, something that can unify. Uh, are you also seeing um, Mesopotamian history and culture uh, sort of infiltrate into uh, modern Iraqi culture, into the creation of movies, uh, literature, poetry, the arts today? Yes, uh, clearly from you know fine, fine, fine arts, mostly you know fire and fine arts in the sculpture. They uh, in the artists they started you know using Mesopotamian. You know, scene and Mesopotamian culture in their uh, in their you know products, as well as in the literature and in poetry, in literature and cinema and theater, and also uh, uh, you know writing you know books of, of, about you know Mesopotamia. Um, the kind of intensive you know work to re revival uh, Mesopotamian culture in modern. Uh, art uh, in the theater always you know they kind of playing uh, uh, you know drama you know regarding to Sumer and, and Babel Babylon and of course you know Gilgamesh uh, epic always on top of, of the things um, using you know scenes from Mesopotamian cylinder seal I, I know you know a group of 
uh, you know, artists, they started recreating uh, cylinder seals, uh, Sumerian and Akkadian uh, you know, cylinder seal and, uh, you know, uh, presented to the people. And ge in general, I think the, the new wave uh, of, you know, respecting uh, Mesopotamian and Mesopotamian uh, indeed started in 2003. And uh, we can tell there's, a, 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 you know, a, a few movies uh, uh, you know, produced two, two years ago about, you know, uh, uh, Mesopotamia. And also, uh, the, you know, documentaries, a lot of, you know, documentaries, you know, documenting uh, the, the, the ancient cities and uh, presenting the, to the population. That's very, very wonderful to hear. And um, look forward to learning more about that. I want to move us on to a, a new question, if that's okay. Um, and that is uh, a question about um, the state of museums today in Iraq. Uh, what role are Iraqi museums playing in the preservation of Iraqi cultural heritage? What challenges do they face? And how are museums helping to shape this new national identity? Well, uh, yes, we do, we do have the uh, Iraqi museum as the central institution, as the you know, central museum in Iraq, but also we do have a uh, few museums that uh, are open now. Five, you know, museums are, are uh, you know, open now. One in Basra, the biggest one in the south is in Basra, and one in Nasiriyah, one in Babylon, and uh, of course with, the, with those in Erbil and uh, Soleimani in Kurdistan, you know, region. So uh, talking about it, the Iraqi museum, we opened it uh, from, from nine to six. Uh, before that, it was open from nine to, to one, just to give an opportunity to the you know, families and employees to come after three o'clock. So we, we extended from three, th three o'clock to six o'clock just to, to give up an opportunity to, to the people to visit the, the museum. Also through the, the weekends, people can come to the uh, Iraqi museum. And we, we do have educational department in the museum to educate the people, to guide them. And I, I can tell you, know, people are you know, proud of the museum, the Iraqi museum, and we know the story of what happened to the museum. And now we restored it in 2015, and that now it's all open to the public. Uh, 23 galleries are open uh, uh, from uh, Neolithic up to the Islamic uh, uh, era and beyond. And uh, museum is, is not only place to, uh, to put thousands of artifacts. It's uh, telling the story of uh, Mesopotamia from the, the beginning, from, from the 10th tenth, uh, tenth, uh, millennia up to, uh, to Islamic era. We have 10,000 pieces displayed in the museum. But for us, I don't want to see like uh, a thousand of, of artifacts in, in one place. Um, we, we need just to tell the story of, of the people. Uh, so every gallery, it, it has uh, you know, named on uh, such uh, you know time time period. So we, we do have Sumerian, uh, Akkadian, Babylonian, and, and so on. So that that's the the way the Iraqi museum designed. But th this is uh, indeed not not enough to house the whole Mesopotamia. We have you know ten 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 thousand of artifacts also in the storage area. So we think about building a new me a museum indeed. Because the, the current one is, is small to have uh, the displays, the, to have the, the people and the, the, the artifacts. So we think about building a new museum, big one, like the Egyptian one, to, to house the, the, the whole you know, artifacts been uh, discovered in, 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 in Iraq. And uh, nowadays, the State Board of, of, of Antiquities, they kind of give you the permit to, to new excavation for international ex expedition, they, they come to, to Iraq and dig. So we, we think about that. We think about creating a new museum bigger than this one, because you know by the by the time there was there were no space for uh, displaying uh, uh, a new uh, you know new artifacts. And also the the building, the current you know building is situated within a residential area, so it's not safe enough. And we remember what what happened in 2003. The other issue that Iraq 
in the in the Islamic, you know, uh, uh, time from Umayyad to uh, to Ottoman era, we we do have uh, four capital cities uh, around the the uh, Islamic, you know, world from Kufa to Basra to to Baghdad and to to Samarra, and so now now this is the time to think about creating an Islamic art museum specifically for Islamic art. So we can turn this one, the current one, into Islamic art museum and build in a new museum. Uh, we, we do have a, a piece of land in center of, of you know, Baghdad and we will call the international com community to support us in building this, this uh, museum. Um, so then, then the, uh, that's the the story of the Iraqi museum, Mosul museum, also in the, in the north, every, everyone you know knows been destroyed by ISIS, and uh, artifacts displayed there were taken uh, abroad. So now this the Smithsonian Institute, uh, uh, starting with uh, with the Directorate of Antiquities in Mosul, starting you know reconstruction the the building, and we hope that. We we are you know able to take it back to to life and uh, display artifacts not only from uh, Assyria but from the whole you know, you know, you know country. The the third example I would tell my story with the Nasriya Museum. If you are allow me, I will, if, if we have you know time to do that. Um, Nasriya Museum is located in in the south, near Ur, and I was. I was uh, the director uh, at that time. I wasn't the, the director; someone else. So we, we were sitting in our in museum in March, you know, 31st, 2003. And next day, the Marine, the American, you know, forces showed up and occupied my city, my 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 uh, my uh, my hometown, Nasiriya. And then they took uh, the museum as headquarters. And I couldn't allow to go inside the museum. As you can see here, this is May 8, 2003, and this been taken by by uh, uh, National Geography. This photo taken to the soldier, you know, marine soldier in the in the museum. So I was able to um, enter the museum and talk to the commander of the marine unit there, and I kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, convinced him to. To go inside the museum and to, to make inventory to the artifacts that uh, displayed in the museum, and so next day I w was also able to encourage him not to safeguarding the museum only, but also to deploy you know patrols to safeguarding archaeological sites. So my my job wasn't uh, taking care of the museum, uh, but also to take care of 1,000. 200 archaeological site in my hometown. So I was able to talk with this uh, guy, Nicholas Visconti is from Long Island. I encourage him to, you know, deploy patrol and to safeguarding archaeological site. We succeed indeed together to safeguarding archaeological site. You know, the, the Marine Forces uh, supported me in, 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 in uh, you know, protecting not only the museum, but also the thousand of archaeological site in the countryside. So, uh, uh, so to, just to give you the the uh, the uh, example of looting there, this is the ex excavation in in an ancient city of, of Umma before 2003, and the result after 2003, this is the the, the whole that you can see is the looting uh, of the site. So, the, all of all of the site in my hometown. You know, most of them, indeed, 60% of them been uh, completely, you know, destroyed. So, with the with the marine uh, forces, we uh, arrange patrols in daily basis. And then, when the Carabinieri, when the Italian showed up to uh, replace the Marines in July 2003, I was also working with them, not only to safeguarding the museum, as you can see here. That it is me. Uh, in July 2003, but also, uh, you know, keep the, uh, the 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 work that the the Marines used to to do, uh, following the, the their their way of protecting the cultural heritage of uh, Nasriya, the museum and the archaeological site. And then, 
it is uh, like what New York, you know, said, uh, New York, you know, time is said, it's the war within the war. Pro uh, protecting archaeological sites, it was my goal, as it was my, you know, job. Uh, although I was an inspector of, uh, I was the director of uh, Nasriya Museum, a director of the museum, but also I, w I worked with the, with the coalition, you know, forces in the countryside to, to save guarding archaeological sites and we continue working and the uh, result of you know five years of you know working from 2003 to 2006 indeed three 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 years is restoring more than 30,000 stolen ob object and send them back to the Iraqi museum and uh, also training these the guards and the museum the museum now became uh, a, a, a kind of a, a headquarter or a school or a, a place a center to train the, the guards and the civil civilian you know, guards the, the policemen to train them w ways of uh, capturing antiquities the stolen uh, uh, antiquities and following the smugglers and looters in the countryside so now the museum it, it has a new role which, which is a, a new role which is uh, educating the people, ed ed educating the guards. And end of 2005, we received the, mu the museum from the Carabinieri. We make an inventory. We made an inventory of the of the object, and nothing been missed. I tell you. And uh, um, then the force is not always the tool of uh, uh, stopping antiquities, the looters of, of antiquities. So. I decided to go to Ayatollah Sistani, who was very important, you know, religious person in Iraq. At that time, when we captured, you know, looters, they would say, this is uh, non-Islamic, uh, you know, civilization, and looting this, you know, antiquities, it would be legitimate from the God. And so I went to, uh, to Ayatollah Sistani, I answered him, I sent him this, you know, questions. Um, but the answer, the answer is, is, is really uh, quite, quite good in s supporting me in my work that the, all these, you know, stolen artifacts should be returned back to the museum, to the Iraq museum or to the uh, uh, local mu museum. But the very important one is the last one. Is there any dif differentiation made between the uh, Islamic and non-Islamic uh, civilization? And he said, all of these, you know, civilization should be respected. We should be uh, preserved. Um, th that's for me enough to to throw it on the villages. I use uh, in helicopter to throw the, the fatwa on the villages from Babylon to Ur. And next day, I I saw the people standing in uh, in front of my museum, and they said, "We don't allow to keep these antiquities with us. We we, we have to uh, return it to the museum." So, in general, the the museum. Uh, played a major role in, you know, deploying, you know, patrol, educating the people and uh, getting the antiquities back from the, the hands of the people without, you know, using uh, army. And uh, so that, that's the, th the three examples of the museum. And now the, mu the museum indeed uh, uh, opened again and it became a kind of, you know, uh, th there is a, a good relationship between the museum and the society with the university, with the you know, writers union. Sometimes they would come to uh, give you a presentation there for making you know, galleries for modern uh, fine arts. So the museum is getting you know, uh, you know, you know better, and we keep the we keep the connection with the with the with the, with the people in different w ways. That's yeah. really. Really, uh, 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 a very fascinating story to hear, um, and it, it actually allows me to bring up. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times 2003 and what happened um, at the National Museum in Baghdad, and I do want to make sure. Uh, I, I suspect that most of our audience is familiar with that, but I want to make sure that everyone is aware that in the wake of the U.S. invasion in 2003, uh, the Baghdad Museum was left unprotected, and uh, over 10,000 artifacts were looted in the space of just a few days, um, and uh, many of those have still not been recovered.
word. Uh, but um, Amir, um, you've uh, been involved in efforts in recovering other artifacts. But that brings me to an interesting question that uh, is actually from the audience in the Q&A. And um, the question has to do with um, what it, why do we um, trouble ourselves with caring for cultural heritage in the midst of, of a war? Um, I know that the headline in the New York Times was the war within the war, right? Uh, right. Why, why put so much energy into caring about cultural heritage in the midst of a war in which there are civilian casualties as well? And I'm curious if you could talk about what your motivations were um, as you well, went about protecting cultural well, heritage. Well, well, yes, yes. Uh, I think the motivation for 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 me uh, is just to see the people. Like uh, uh, the first thing you know motivated me it, it was it, it was this is my civilization, this is my you know heritage, this is my you know civilization, and um, I saw people you know taking care of of that and. Uh, and uh, um, May to um, May 16, 2003, I was trying to convince the um, Marines in, inside the Nasriya Museum to go outside to protect the the, the archaeosat. And next day, there are Henry um, uh, uh, Wright from Michigan Museum and Elizabeth Stone from Stony Brook, together with the team from you know National Geography, and they were traveling from Michigan to Nasriya and uh, my home is next uh, next 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 door to the museum why don't i do it this is my civilization and the 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 the, 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 the thing that you know motivated elizabeth stone in uh, henry Wright coming from new york and michigan to support us it's it is the, the same you know motivation it's it's the the, the, the heritage of the humankind we do care about in you know, heritage not only from from Iraq, but other other you know civilizations we do support that uh, we, we we have to support each other in this you know journey uh, safeguarding uh, cultural heritage for for you know the world it's not just because it's iraqi heritage i do care of it because it's uh, the, the the heritage of the uh, humankind i just i uh, yes i i agree that in ta in times of war uh, one should take a, 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 to care about the sec security of the people in health and food. And my responsibility at that time and still is to take care of the artifacts, uh, cultural heritage. I think you put it beautifully um, and simply just saying this is my civilization and to think yeah. about um, that, you know, civilization, our cultures, our history is what makes us human in the first place. Yeah. And so there's yeah. a role and a place for yeah. caring for that, um, yeah. even yeah. in the most so, challenging times, right? Yeah. So n not only me was on the front line to, so to uh, protecting archaeological site in the South, many people, even, you know, you know female, uh, my, my, my colleagues, I, I would, uh, you know, I appreciate them. I didn't, you know, you know, mention them. I were, I, I, my team were, were, you know, mostly uh, female. They were supporting me. And uh, everybody uh, kind of the media also, uh, you know, supported me. The local population supported me. The, uh, the, uh, the religious the leader, uh, as I said, Ayatollah Sistani, he supported me. I said, this is your, your goal. This is your, 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 your job. So we were in the in the field. We were, you know, collecting data. We were also safeguarding archaeological site by using this, you know, of, you know, forces. Um, the media was, you know, supporting us. So it was not only me. I'm, I I mentioned uh, that, but th this is not only me. Everybody were, were you know, uh, talking about uh, safeguarding archaeological site. But we do have ex examples of, you know, local, you know, population involved in. In, uh, in stolen artifacts, um, uh, some of them, specifically those in the countryside, in the in the villages, they don't have any any income to 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 live, uh, to look. So no 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 food, no security, uh, uh, nothing that you have. So they they kind of started uh, steal antiquities from archaeological site just to. Feed, you know their families, but this is just at the beginning. But later on, the the, the, the gang of you know smugglers and looters they showed up to to the country to, to Iraq and they they led kind of a campaign of intensive and heavy looting. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, um, I'm mindful of the time. I want to move us on to um, some of your, your recent work, but um, it is so encouraging to hear about what you've done um, uh, during your time as director of the Nasriya Museum and um, your ongoing concern for, for cultural heritage. Um, and in a related way, I wanted to ask, I know that you are currently developing a major new digital research project um, and resource for documenting archaeological sites in Iraq. And I wondered if you could share uh, more about this project with us and your perspective on the role that digital pr approaches play um, in protecting, preserving, and, and sharing cultural heritage. Yes. Uh, and in the in times of in the, in the time of war in 2003 war when i go outside uh, with those security forces i was able to collect data from the archaeological site although my goal wasn't to do that but and indeed i collected you know data from several archaeological sites and i were thinking of you know keep going and do uh, field work and survey and i was able to to um, to manage to to document and to survey uh, uh, 1200 archaeological sites this is in my hometown in the, in Nasori and also <clears throat> i'm sorry <clears throat> in the in the south in you know general <clears throat> so i i with my colleagues with my team uh, was able to collect you know data uh, uh, from 1200 archaeological sites. So I was thinking to build um, a kind of to, to, to build a digital uh, database, but at that time I didn't have a tool to, to, to do that. All of the materials that they will have, you know, maps and information, they are, you know, paper, on, you know, you know, will, you know, paper may, may, may be disappeared or, you know, lost. So I was thinking, I was thinking of creating a digital uh, database. I, I, I need to learn uh, GIS and remote sensing. So I wrote to El El Elizabeth Stone uh, from Stonybrook University asking her to kind of to involve me in kind of a training course in GIS. That was in, in, in 2008. So from 2003 to 2008, I was able to, to add 600 sites to the uh, Iraq Atlas map. But when I went to Stony Brook, I, I came back to Iraq with uh, satellite images, with the GIS software. So I, I was able to add another 600 within, within uh, two, two years. So that, that's, you know, led me to think about the country, the whole country, not only my hometown, but also other, you know, other parts of the country of, 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 of Iraq. So we, in Iraq, we do have uh, the atlas map, atlas of the archaeological site in Iraq, and th these are, you know, maps, paper ma ma maps, and uh, they are, you know, and un useful in terms of using them in GIS uh, remote sensing because they are not geofranced. So uh, I collected these uh, 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 maps and I digitized them and scanned them and georeferenced them. It took me a year, almost a, a, a year to, to, to do this work, uh, 127 atlas maps. And it has only information about uh, uh, 7,500 archeological sites. So that, that's the, the, the the first or the second uh, data set that, data set that I used to create the, the digital uh, database. So uh, the third one is the, uh, so the, this also is, you know, li limited to some of information, not, not, uh, not a lot in the data for only 5,000 site out of 7,500. 7, so the, 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 that's the, the second data set. The third one is the Iraqi uh, army maps, the Iraqi army maps, the extra Iraqi maps. They kind of created maps to the whole you know, country. So that, then I also uh, digitized them and s s scanned them and georeferenced them. And uh, the, the fourth uh, data set is the uh, you know, uh, previous 
uh, survey in, in Iraq. The result of the previous uh, surveys in Iraq that have been done in from 50s to 80s by uh, Robert Adams uh, from Chicago University and his colleagues uh, McGuire Gibson, Tony Wilkinson, and, uh, and and others. So I collect this you know data from them and also I added I added to the uh, to the atlas map, and then the the fifth one is the uh, satellite images, uh, specifically those from 60s and uh, 50s and uh, 60s, the, the, the corona images. So I, you know, extract the data from these images from the north to the, to, to the south. And uh, the result is having, instead of uh, uh, 7,500 uh, in, the, in the Atlas map, the, the current one, the current uh, map, it has 15,000 archaeological sites so far, so far. So this, you know, data is to, 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 to discover and uh, to document the unknown uh, sites, but also to monitor them, to monitor the, the, the current, you know, condition of those, you know, sites and to assist the, the condition of these you know, sites by using satellite images uh, remote, the sensing. So the shape file and GIS including uh, include uh, data from the field and from the uh, from the satellite image from the space, archaeological, uh, ethnographic, and uh, historical data for for each site. So this is, for example, in Nineveh, uh, uh, in the a province in the in the north. It, it, the, 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 the data for, for each site has all of this uh, useful information. And uh, uh, just to give an ex ex example about uh, the useful usefulness of this uh, data set. So with the Atlas map, with the Iraqi Atlas maps in 1971, this is Baghdad, the capital city of, 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 of Iraq. In the Atlas, it, it, it has only Three three hundred fifty sites, but with the with the new atlas, the number is kind of eight eight uh, eight hundred. So that that's the you know difference between using the the more, the, the old uh, atlas map and the new uh, digital uh, uh, database. And uh, so the, just to the 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 result, the new atlas has increased the the total. The, Number of of archaeological sites uh, clearly, and it can be used for you know researchers and students to conduct you know their field work on the uh, you know uh, excavation. So if someone has a question in his mind or or her mind to dig a site from the, let's say the era of uh, you know, Hammurabi, he or she would go to to the to the you know data set and and uh, select uh, uh, the targeted site any question in their mind they could uh, find an uh, answer if they limited you know their search to a specific uh, time like uh, you know bronze age uh, in iron age so the the data is in the, uh, classified in this way um, in the periodically and uh, of course the, the final result is giving uh, to the uh, to, to the state board of antiquities and they do manage it they, they kind of you know, they, they they can give access to the researcher and what you, you know, username and, and you know, password, and uh, of course it would be important to use this you know data set to to plan for the modern uh, development you know project, in, in instead of you know destroying archaeological site if they want to build a, a road or you know uh, building or digging a, a, an irrigation canal. They would ask the uh, state board of antiquities to investigate the area and using the data set, uh, the data set to give a permit. But this is not alternative on, of doing a survey on the ground. The result of of uh, of the of the data set it can tell the 15,000 among these you know 15,000 archaeological sites only maybe two two percent of them been excavated. And uh, you can imagine uh, how much in you know, the work is waiting for us. 
I, I, I can only imagine, but that in and, some ways that's very exciting, and, right? Um, and then and I it's took, incredible I took, to... Re sorry. I took this, you know, experience and example and working with the, with the, with the Amina project, the Endangered Archaeology in the Middle East and North Africa. This is run by Oxford, Lister and, you know, Durham. So I was the training manager in Durham University and we trained uh, employees of the Department of Antiquities uh, from Morocco to Afghanistan. And almost uh, I spent a year or two years to, to do this work. And then I turned to Iraq and came back to Iraq in 2018 and creating training a team from the state world of, of antiquities and about you know, ways of using satellite images to document to find archaeological site were cannot canal you know, systems. So I trained almost two, uh, 20 uh, uh, employees and we selected 10 of them to the advanced one. And now the, the, those 10 em employees are the national, are like the creating the national you know, record and uh, national team. Uh, they kind of you know, build a uh, national uh, uh, archives of archaeologists are, are, are now they are uh, kind of trained enough and they have skills of using satellite images and remote sensing to find a new sites. It's just incredible to think about how the shift to the digital um, has not only helped manage the scale of the number of sites um, in a country like Iraq, um, but um, even increased the scale, if you will, um, and helped uncover new um, new sites and um, promise for, for future work. Um, crazy to think that uh, from 7,500 known sites now to over 15,000. Um, thinking about that future work and the work going on today, I want to ask you a final question, and then maybe we'll have time for a few more questions from the audience. There are some, some really great ones. Um, but I wanted to ask, how can American institutions like the Bowdoin College Museum of Arts, uh, which hold in our collections uh, reliefs from Nimrud and other Iraqi cultural heritage, how can we take part in what is really a global task of caring for Iraqi cultural heritage? What do you see is our role, and what are our responsibilities towards our colleagues and the community in Iraq? Well, as you said, it's a, you know a global task to safeguarding and you know protecting uh, Iraqi heritage, and um, most of the major museums in the U.S. and Europe they already involved in first training the, the staff of the uh, Iraqi museum and other museums, giving them opportunity to study abroad and, you know, fellowship. And um, I, I can tell ex examples of, of, of that in Chicago, uh, the uh, Oriental Institute of Chicago University. They trained a lot of Iraqis in the, in the recent uh, 15 years. Columbia, um, the Met Museum, the in you know, the Metropolitan the Museum, Penn Museum, um, the British Museum, you know, other museums in Europe. They also started in 2003, the training and uh, uh, the the staff, the curators of the Iraqi museum. So, your museum, Bowdoin Museum, can also involve in that. And it's not too late. It's still uh, the opportunity is still still there. Um, training the, those people, um, um, educating them, not educating them, is indeed giving them opportunity to to study or to to get a workshop workshops or uh, you know short short uh, short you know time a training that would be really useful. And also raising awareness of the importance of Iraq heritage. Uh, the museum can play a major role in, in that in terms of educating the, the people and uh, raise you know, uh, 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 yeah, awareness of that. Our difficulties, our, our challenge in, 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 in Iraq is the, is the smuggled uh, antiquities. Those antiquities have been taken from from the country and went to uh, America and you know Europe, 
um, every 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 time every every time we, we will see uh, some kind of you know art, you know artifacts displayed in you know galleries and in, in auctions. And we need the museum. We need your, your, your museum to support us in terms of, you know, restoring this stolen uh, artifacts. The problem is really with the with the with the dealers and the you know, the private collections. That's we we don't we don't have access. We don't have information to these to these you know, artifacts. So the the museum could play a major role in, in that in terms of like. I don't know. Uh, there is, you know, several several ways of, you know, raising awareness in in terms of the importance of restoring or return uh, Iraqi you know, artifacts in the U.S. to uh, to Iraq. And uh, I can tell the you know Penn Museum, Pennsylvania Museum, they have you know done a great you know job in, in you know in supporting us. Uh, return uh, uh, return uh, back uh, 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 written you know document from the, the museum into Iraqi museum, Chicago M museum or the Oriental M M museum in, in Chicago. I think you know they have uh, done a, a good job, not only by uh, training the people, but but also supporting us in our legal cases of uh, restoring antiquities, uh, stolen uh, uh, antiquities. I would mention. Um, uh, Professor you know, McGuire, you know Gibson. He 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 was always supporting us when we find uh, a, a stolen you know piece from Iraq. He would support us when he was the director of uh, Tari Institute. Um, so several ways we can we can use others' experience in others' action to follow it as an example. It's very. Um... Encouraging to hear about all these different ways we, we might support your work and the work of your colleagues, um, and really looking forward to continuing that conversation um, uh, even after this program. Uh, I, I want to ask one more question because I think it's related, and I think it's a very interesting one coming in from the audience. And this is a question um, that uh, acknowledges that there is, in fact, a very large Iraqi diaspora in foreign countries, including on college campuses like Bowdoin College. What would you rec recommend to descendants of Iraqi heritage around the world uh, to help preserve their Iraqi identity and culture abroad? I mean, Iraq, Iraq, Iraq diaspora, right? In, the, in exile. Right, yes, Iraqi. Sir. Well, uh, I mean, we all we, we, we all consider this our our again, heritage. Indeed, we are taking care of the, of the heritage of the minorities that used to live in, the, in Iraq. Their heritage is is there. Uh, their you know temples, uh, religious centers, uh, you know private uh, houses are there still in Mosul, Baghdad, and Basra. And we encourage them to just to uh, to you know to, to come back to Iraq and taking care of, of of this of this you know heritage. From the government side and the state board of antiquities, and I would say we emphasize on that they don't distinguish between uh, which heritage is belong to which uh, community. We 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 all you know respect this you know heritage. We all taking care of, 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 of our heritage. But the, the issue that we need them to come back to Iraq to take care of, of, of their heritage. Um, uh, the heritage of you know, Jewish or Jews in Baghdad and also they, these are there. And we use you know, someone who could you know, come on the, and you know, uh, talk to the, to the, in the, to the government. At, at, at the same time, the, the, you know, the Christians also, um, their, their heritage still exists in Mosul, in Basra, in, uh, in Baghdad. So we do respect that heritage, and we do say this is a, a you know, Mesopotamian heritage, Iraqi heritage. And as the fatwa said, which is issued in 2003, there is no differentiation between Islamic and non-Islamic civilization and uh, heritage and I, I can tell uh, you know every people in, in Iraq all the, all the people in Iraq they would you know they respect the uh, heritage of the indigenous societies 
I think that's a, a wonderful note to end on. It circles back to your point about Mesopotamian heritage as a umbrella or um, connecting, uh, unifying heritage. Uh, Amir, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and, and sharing uh, your decades of experience and, and um, insight with us. And I'm going to invite um, Anne Goodyear, uh, museum director, back on the screen to offer some final remarks. Thank you both so much for an extraordinarily informative and far-ranging discussion. We're grateful to you, Dr. Alhamdani, for being so generous and sharing your insights with us. Um, you've left us with lots of fascinating food for thought. Thank you as well to members of the audience for sharing your questions and thoughts with us. We can't wait until the time that it's possible to come back together in person to continue the conversation. And on that note, thinking of coming back together, we do want to encourage all of you to continue to join us with us virtually and to remind you that our great spring programming will continue later this month on Thursday, April 22nd at one o'clock with a presentation by the contemporary Cameroonian artist, Hervé Yumbi. Following a short presentation by Mr. Yumbi, he will be joined in conversation by Dominique Malake, co-director with, with Kadayatu Diallo of the experimental curatorial platform, SPARC, Space for Pan-African Research, Creation and Knowledge. We look forward to seeing you again online. We can't wait to gather again in person. And thank you again, Dr. Burris and Dr. Halimdani for a fascinating time this afternoon. Goodbye and wishing everybody a continued um, wonderful day ahead. Bye-bye.